So we did talk about this last time. What was equilibrium through all of the last exam content? Reversibility was being near it, and what is it? Yeah. Perfect. Love it. Okay? System properties, macro scale properties, are constant. Okay? Things like temperature, things like energy, things like entropy, from the macro scale, look constant. Things like pressure, volume, mass, whatever. Nothing's changing. Okay? But then we know that microscopically, Molecules are moving around, they are colliding, they're exchanging energy with each other even though the total energy of the system isn't changing. And this is sort of happening in a really chaotic and random fashion. Okay. But global properties are stable with time. And so these figures are again plotted as whatever the property is versus time, it's constant. Okay. So if you want to move away from equilibrium, what do you have to do? Add energy. What's some other things we could add? What's a form of energy you could add? Heat, great. What's some other stuff you could add to the system? So the adding some, some mass, some other chemical for it to diffuse in the system is, are the two examples. Heat is a candle. We would never do it that way. But. So if we have our, our system that we're looking at here, some test tube and a heat bath with some liquid in it, we can either maybe add some other solution in such that it's going to disperse throughout the um, total solution or we could heat it up. And so the important thing to note is that while we'll have some change to the system temporarily with time, eventually we will reach equilibrium again and the equilibrium may or may not be the same as it was before. Okay. We might make a change that then we return to the same equilibrium, um, such as what's kind of being shown here going on with temperature. Um, but here, once we're adding in some sort of second molecule to mix around, entropy is permanently increasing. Um, here it looks like, I don't know, energy is bizarre because it's starting differently, but it's maybe, maybe it drops. Okay. Maybe these things react with each other and form a new, more stable compound that's at a lower energy state. Something like that. So free energy is sort of a new property for us. Every time we've been talking about energy so far, we needed to stop and go, are we talking about work? Are we talking about heat? Are we talking about bond energy contained um, in our molecules? Are we talking about enthalpy? Were we talking about kinetic energy, potential energy? Where are these things? Um, free energy is its sort of new thing that kind of wraps them all together. Okay? And most importantly, free energy is sort of a predicting property. It lets us sort of answer some questions about the system. Most importantly, what direction would spontaneous change want to happen to reach a new equilibrium state? So you can look at a system and predict, one, is it at equilibrium? And two, if it's not, where does it want to go or what does it want to do to reach it? Okay. And free energy and really the sign of the change in free energy dictates this. So we can also think about what will the final values of our system properties be at the new equilibrium. We can think about will final temp rise or fall, and change in free energy will help give us all of this, these answers. Okay. Another way to think about it is we're finally putting together the first law and the second law of thermo. Okay. The first law was, of course, that uh, we have conservation of energy. It can't be destroyed. And the second law was that the direction of all spontaneous changes towards increased entropy. However, with Gibbs free energy, what we'll realize is we can have systems that have a lower entropy, and that can still be spontaneous depending on what's happening with the energy term. Okay? These two things are in competition. Okay? 